Thanks for staying with us. I'm John Kasich in for Bill O'Reilly. And in the Factor Flashback segment tonight, Richard Chamberlain, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, there wasn't any cable TV, so millions of Americans watched very few channels. Thus, programs that succeeded became enormous and made icons out of the actors. One such program was Dr. Kildare, starring Richard Chamberlain, which ran from 1961 to 1965. After that, Mr. Chamberlain starred in a number of miniseries like the Thornburgs, always playing a man designed to attract women, but in his private life, Chamberlain was gay. His tell-all book, Shattered Love, is now out in paperback. Bill recently spoke with Mr. Chamberlain. In the history of show business, only two men, you and Rock Hudson, have been able to be icons, leading men, but homosexuals in their private life. Only two. And I would think the pressure would have been enormous. Well, there could have been more than two. No, we, d we did a search. We oh, did yeah? a search. And <laughs> only two. I mean, you've got, you've got Anthony a Perkins, search? you've got Montgomery Cliff, but, you know, he was a very short time. We don't really know. Sal Minio, not a leaving man. Only two that became icons. You yeah. and Hudson. Well, the thing is, it doesn't matter. Uh, actors deal in illusion. We create illusions. Nothing you see in movies is real. Uh, when Mel Gibson shoots somebody, it's not real blood and they don't really die. Uh, when Brad Pitt makes love to some gorgeous actress, there are 50 people standing around. They're not really making love. And he goes home to his wife and she goes home to her lover. Uh, it's, it's illusion. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, this, this business of straight and gay doesn't matter at all. But it must have uh, mattered to you. It matters in people's minds. That's sure. right. It matters in people's Look, sure. I remember when I was a little kid watching your program, and I, and I have to be, I didn't watch it because of you. I watched it because of Yvette Mimieux. <laughs> remember her? I loved her. I? And she was yes. like your girlfriend, right? Right on that program for a while? Well, she was. That's everybody's favorite. It was called Tiger yeah, Tiger. Yeah, I, I mean, it was, whoa, Yvette. But I liked you, and I bought you as the leading man, and you were yeah. fine. But yeah. off the screen, you, you had to be real careful, did you not? <clears throat> yeah, I did. I, I had to... Uh, I think all actors, all performers have two illusions. One, the one they create on screen, and the one about their personal lives. Uh, how much do we really know about uh, 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 Russell Crowe or any of those people? Um, but, yeah, you have to be careful because I didn't want to spoil the illusion. Right. And if, you, if somebody, uh, one of these tabloids had come out with pictures of you and uh, your partner or, or whatever, yeah. the, the studio, uh, I mean, the network would have been appalled. That must put a lot of pressure on you as a human yeah, being. Yeah, but it wasn't, it wasn't about to happen. And um, it was, there was a slight area of, of fear about that, but it just didn't seem like it was in the cards, so I didn't worry about it a lot. But you didn't go um, to gay bars and stuff like that. No, you no, no, right. never. No. So you were very cognizant of your public image. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And very uh, sensitive to the affection that I was receiving from, gosh, millions of women. Well, it I was, was going to ask you about that, because there are some gay guys in Hollywood now who uh, are married and yes. have girlfriends, and not, but they're, not, they're just like PR marriages and PR girlfriends. Did they set that up for you? No, 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 never. I, I had some wonderful girlfriends, and I used to take them to um, uh, premieres and stuff like that. I wasn't about to take a guy to a premiere. <laughs> that yeah. would have been suicide. All right. So we get the picture. <laughs> though. But it didn't cause you any, uh, any pain privately as a human being? Yes, of course it did. Uh, the whole business... You see, I, I was as homophobic as anybody else. Really? I grew up in the 30s, 40s, and 50s when, when it was generally considered the worst thing you could possibly be. So I hid it as much as I could and didn't tell anybody and didn't talk about it with anybody, even my parents. Um, uh, and so I, I lived with this idea that there was something very, very, very wrong with me. And it wasn't until, gosh, just a few months ago when I was writing the book that I suddenly realized that it's a total non-issue. Uh, a person's sexuality is a private matter and simply not even interesting. I mean, you, Bill, tell me you're straight. What does that mean? Listen, I, I'm with you all the way. I tell people, yeah. don't talk about it. It's nobody's yeah. business but your own, what you decide yeah, absolutely. to do. Absolutely. And, and nothing good can come of it. Now, when you 
basically said to yourself, okay, look, here's who I am, but I'm an actor, and, and I have a responsibility of my network and my program, yes. and this is the way I'm going to live. And all to right. my fans. W did other gay people in Hollywood, and there are, you know, legions of them behind the scenes and all that, did they say you're a traitor for not coming out of the closet no. and all of that? No. I never heard that, ever. No? I never discussed it with anybody. Um, but there, was, just, there were rumors. People up. knew. Tab Hunter, you. Oh, you know. sure, there were rumors yeah. in, in, in the business, but I don't think there were a lot of rumors in the general public, as far as I know. I but today we have myself. gay activists who like demand that if you're gay, you stand up and tell everybody. You know that. Yes, they got me in big trouble. In about 90, I was sort of outed by the tabloids because of some gay activist. Yeah, what did you it think? It scared of me to death. It really scared me to death because I hadn't come to terms with it myself mm -hmm. in my own heart. And, uh, and I was worried about my career, but it didn't really change much. But that was an intrusion into your life, that's for oh, sure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. The absolutely. press is a lot more vicious now than it was in the 60s. I mean, it, yes, it, it just every newspaper has 500 gossip columnists, and they're printing yeah. every, everything. And um, So at least you don't have to deal with it now in this kind of a climate. But, you know, I feel sorry for people who, you know, are under that kind of pressure. Um, I, feel, I actually feel sorry for people who have a lot of illusions in their head about what gay is. I mean, I know some gay people who are really wonderful people. Of course there are. I think I'm a really wonderful person. Of I've course, been in a relationship no, for 26 Mr. years. Mr. Shaman, let me break this to you, all right? Yeah. All right. No clear-thinking American thinks no. gay people are bad. Yeah. That's just the fringe, the crazies. I always say, yeah. look, let the deity sort this out, you know? We're all Americans yes. here. We're all yes. in it together. Yes. I mean, it, the yes. Al-Qaeda are going to kill you, they're going to kill me. They don't yes, care what true. you're doing. As long that's as you're not sure. in their face, as long as they're not pushing your agenda, Americans yeah. will accept it. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, Good. When, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, it's true. I mean, I, believe me, I know. I mean, I get mail and thousands of letters a week. Uh -huh. What's the message, the main theme of Shattered Love, your book? What do you want people to invest their time and money to take away the, from the book? The main question of the book, I talk a lot about show business and all that stuff, but the main question in the book is, is it possible to live with an open heart that is in the presence of love all the time, no matter what life throws at you? And my answer is yes. And I'm, ta I'm not talking about romantic love here. I'm talking about what we call unconditional love or divine love. It's, it's, it's more a state of being than something you do. And I think, I think the, reason, the reason I think the answer is yes, you can, is because love is the absolute source, I think, of wisdom and intelligence. And why close yourself to wisdom and intelligence when you're dealing with, and in other words, when you hate somebody, you're out of relationship with them. Your heart is closed, and wisdom and intelligence tend to go out the window. All right. Richard Chamberlain, we appreciate you taking the time. Book is Shattered Love. We hope everybody buys it. Thanks very much. I hope so, too.